In this video, we'll be talking about peptic ulcer disease and peptic ulcer refers to the sores or ulcers that develop onto different location in the uh, stomach and some part of the intestine. So there could be in, uh, ulcers in the lining of the stomach, upper part of the small intestine, which is duodenum, and also in rare occasions, lower part of the esophagus. So this is collectively known as the peptic ulcer disease. One of the biggest cause for peptic ulcer disease is basically the H. pylori infection. H. pylori is a notorious bacteria which can literally kill you slowly. But in this video, we would talk about how H. pylori can possibly cause ulcerations. So H. pylori gets into the stomach and generally every bacteria kind of die in the stomach because it has harsh gastric HCL. So here is a mucus layer. On top of it, there is a protective gastric HCL layer. Normally, uh, the bacteria and the pathogens that are getting inside our GI tract with food or water generally gets killed off with these gastric HCL. But H. pylori is different because H. pylori can reduce the can can change the pH. So basically, it has an enzyme called urease, which can buffer the excessive acidity of the stomach. And it can increase the pH of the stomach to 5.7 from uh, the pH which is below 3 goes towards 5. That means gastric acidity decreases. And in this case, H. pylori has those flagella which can allow them to propel through that thick mucus and it can adhere to the uh, basically epithelial cells of the stomach. Now it has specific enzymes on the top. One of the prime one was the urease enzyme that converts urea into ammonia which buffers basically or neutralize the acidity. There are adhesin molecules which adhere these bacteria with these cells. There are flagella which help in chemotaxis and there are molecules like VAC-A and CAG-A which are potent cytotoxins and basically they are responsible for the pathogenicity of this bacterium. So the surface bound VAC-A works like also adhesins. Also these VAC-A can bind to specific receptors on the cells and triggers production of inflammatory cytokine which lead to inflammation of the stomach lining. Also it lead to erosion of the stomach lining because prolonged inflammation can lead to uh, cell death. So there could be leakage of the mitochondria of these epithelial cells, cytochrome C would be released which might lead to apoptosis. When many of these cells die and erosion happens of the stomach lining, it would lead to peptic ulcer. The second cause is basically non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug like ibuprofen. Generally, these drugs, if overused, can lead to problem. How does that happen? Because generally the stomach lining is protected by a prostaglandin known as prostaglandin E2. These NSAID drugs prevent the production of these prostaglandins and basically thereby causing gastritis. So prostaglandins are actually important and protective for the st stomach lining. The third one is basically known as Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. This is a very rare endocrine syndrome where there is a tumor, a neuroendocrine tumor uh, occurs in the duodenal wall. And these neuroendocrine tumor actually secretes a hell lot of gastrin. Now, as you know what gastrin does, gastrin kind of stimulates the stomach, especially the parietal cell to secrete HCL. And this HCL would increase the acidity in the stomach. Also, some of these acid would go to the duodenum and create more acidity in the duodenal uh, region and it would erode the mucosa of the duodenum leading to duodenal ulcers. So overall, what we learn about the peptic ulcer disease, there are two broad categories. There could be gastric ulcer and duodenal ulcer. Duodenum and gast uh, gastric ulcers are location wise different. So gastric ulcer means ulcer that is happening in the stomach. We see the association of H. pylori in that. Then in duodenal ulcer, we see it happening in the duodenum. So in context of pain, gastric ulcer is more painful and it can be increased with uh, with increased meal and duodenal ulcer can decrease with meal intake. H. pylori infection is associated with both these ulceration situations. So the mechanisms are different. So decrease in mucosal protection against gastric acid happens in case of gastric ulcer. And there is also mucosal protection defect 
in case of duodenal ulcer due to increased acidity. There are other causes <coughs> of the gastric ulcer or duodenal ulcer other than H. pylori. H. pylori is the major one, but NSAIDs are highly associated with gastric ulcer, whereas the Zollinger Ellison syndrome, which we looked at, which is basically a neuroendocrine tumor on the duodenal wall, that can lead to duodenal ulcers. Risk of carcinoma, very high in case of the gastric ulcers. If gastric ulcers are not treated, it would create chronic inflammation and ultimately it can lead to adenocarcinoma. Basically, the duodenal ulcers are benign and uh, it can basically be uh, treated if the underlying cause is treated and biopsy is not required. But for the gastric ulcers, biopsy is required to understand the staging. Anyway, H. pylori, treat H. pylori treatment and testing is really important to understand whether there is a peptic ulcer or a gastric ulcer, etc. So due on due course, the treatment is really important. Otherwise, it would turn into a chronic inflammation. So there are tests which measures the UDS enzyme activity. I have a total different video on UDS test. Watch that. But anyway, H. pylori, which is the predominant cause of these peptic ulcer disease, can be cured by combinatorial antibiotics such as amoxicillin, uh, tetracycline, etc. But it's always use or prescribed in a combination and there are first second and third line of therapy and each of these are sort of combinatorial therapy some works better on the uh, 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 patients than the other so overall h pylori treatment is really important to eradicate the peptic ulcer disease so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe see you in the next video